Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you how you can use common table expressions, or CTEs for short, in Microsoft SQL Server. We'll begin this session with a quick explanation of what a CTE actually is, and we'll show you how you can create a very basic one to demonstrate the simple principles. We'll then move on and show you a slightly more practical use for CTEs, calculating a sequence of aggregates. We'll also show you a neat way to name the columns in a CTE to avoid writing aliases. And finally, we'll finish the video with a quick look at how to create multiple CTEs and how you can use them in combination in a final query. So let's get started. In SQL Server, a common table expression, or a CTE for short, is simply a technique for creating a temporary set of records, which you can then reuse immediately in another select statement, for instance. So for our first very simple example, and please do bear in mind this is an incredibly simple example just to demonstrate the principle, we've got a simple select statement here which shows us a list of films released before the year 2000. And it's this that I'd like to turn into my common table expression. So in order to do that, here are the standard things you'll need to do. Uh, above the select statement you'll need to write the word with, and then come up with a sensible name that describes your CTE. So mine's going to be called Early Films. Follow that with the word as, and then you simply need to wrap up your select statement in a set of round brackets. So if I open a set of parentheses above the select statement and close it right at the end, I can simply indent these to, to tidy up the layout. And there you go, that's your common table expression. You'll probably notice at this point that we still have a, a syntax error indicator with this little squiggly red underline here. And that's because once you've created a common table expression, you need to immediately use it in another statement. So for example, we could use this, um, the set of temporary records returned by my CTE, we could then use in a subsequent select statement. So as a really, really simple example, um, we can write below this, select, and I can simply select everything using the asterisk from my CTE, which is called Early Films, and there's my uh, my CTE named. Now that'd be completely pointless, obviously, to do this in the real world. Let me let me add a quick extra thing. You could add another where clause, for instance. So this could be filtered subsequently where the film's runtime minutes, perhaps, is greater than 120. So it should be all the films released before the year 2000, whose running time is longer than 120 minutes. Again, obviously, we could have built these two where clauses into one single select statement. Bear in mind this is just purely to demonstrate the principle of how a CTE works. If I execute this query, I ought to end up with a list of films whose release dates are before 2000 and whose running time is longer than 120. So we've seen an example of a very basic CTE just to demonstrate the principle, but common table expressions really come into their own when you have a sequence of complicated steps to perform to reach the answer you want. So here's another example where we're showing um, the number of films made in each country in uh, the film table. So we've grouped by the film's country ID and if I execute this query we'll see a list of basically the count of films made in each country. What I'd like to do now is change this into a CTE so that I can find the average of this column of numbers. So in order to do that what I'll first of all have to do is give this field an alias. I'm going to give it the uh, number of films alias. Now I can turn this into a CTE in the same way we did earlier on. So I'm going to use the with keyword. Film counts is what I'm going to call it. As, and then I can open up a set of parentheses, close them at the end, and then just to tidy up my layout, indent my select statement. Now that's my CTE. What I need to do now is execute another select statement on the results returned by it. So below the parentheses, I'm going to type in select from, and my common table expression was called film counts. So that's what I'm going to use here, film counts. And I can simply look for the average of one of the fields within it and the field that I want should be called number of films. When I execute this entire query now, that will tell me the average number of films released per country. So hopefully you can see with this example, this will be somewhat more complicated to try to do using a single select statement. The common table expression here really, really helps us to break down the logic of the individual steps we need to perform. 
As a quick side note, it's worthwhile mentioning that you can relabel the columns in a CTE without using aliases as I've done here. If I take this alias away completely, what I can do is I can actually add the names for my CTE columns after the name that I've decided to give it. So if I open another set of parentheses, I can create a column called country and I can create another column called number of films. Well, that means now if I execute the query, it'll work happily as it did earlier on and give me the same results. Um, but I can also refer to those columns by name in my second select statement. So I could do things like refer to the country field, and there it is in the IntelliSense list. And I could also refer to my number of films field as well. And there that is. If I execute the query again, I'll get a different set of results that will just show me the same information. But it's worthwhile knowing that a second way to rename the columns in a CTE. You can simply include a comma-separated list in parentheses after the CTE's name. Hopefully it goes without saying, although I'm about to say it anyway, that if you've labelled a certain number of columns in the definition of the CTE, you need to make sure you select the same number of columns when you, uh, when you select the records for it. All the examples we've shown so far have involved just a single common table expression, but it's certainly worthwhile knowing that you can generate a list of CTEs at the same time, and then use the entire list in a combination in the final result set. So here we've gone back to our previous early films CTE. What I'd like to do now is add another CTE which shows me a list of films released since the year 2000. So to do that in the quickest, easiest way possible, I'm going to copy everything from my first CTE definition apart from the word with. I'll copy that. Then I need to add a comma after the first CTE. Then I can simply paste in what I previously had and then modify its name. So I'll call this one recent films. Of course I'll need to modify my operators there so I'm looking for all the films whose release date is on or after the 1st of January 2000. So at this point I now still need to use these two CTEs in a final select statement. So let's add another select statement. I'm going to select everything from, and I'm going to go with early films first. There it is, early films. I'll give this an alias as E, and I'm going to use an inner join to link it to the recent films CTE. I'll give this an alias as R, and then I'll say I want to join these two tables on the film name field. So on E dot film name, and where that is equal to R dot film name. So what this combination of CTE should now do, when I execute the query, it will show me a list of films whose names appear in both the early film table and the recent films table. If I execute the entire query, that's what we get. So King Kong actually appears twice in the early film table and once in the recent films, and we have Around the World in 80 Days and Casino Royale as well. So that's how you build a list of CTEs. It's as easy as adding a comma after the first one, coming up with a new name, and then writing another select statement. The same rule applies as with just a single CTE. You must use a reference to each one that you've created in a final set of results. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.